going to have to get going, and um, people who are still registering there can, can take their seats as soon as they've registered. Um, so, okay, first of all, just to say everybody is very welcome. We're delighted that there has been such a great response to, to this event, and listening to the buzz before we start, start there's obviously a lot that people want to talk about. Um, my name, for those of you who don't know me, is Hugh Fraser, and I have been invited to, to chair today's conference. J just to say who I am, for those who don't know me, um, I am a former director of the Combat Poverty Agency, and currently, amongst other things, I'm an adjunct professor in Maynooth, and I coordinate a network of experts for the European Commission on Social Inclusion Policies around, around Europe, and then work for various NGOs and UNICEF and people like that. Just a word about the, the purpose of today's conference is really about shaping our future. It's about um, building a vision for the future and trying to promote debate and discussion about what that vision should be. And then second, I suppose, purpose of the conference is if we have a vision, how, how do we use it? How do we build alliances? So it's about, secondly, about trying to build alliances. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot about the background because Siobhan's going to talk about that in a minute, but just, just a word about the structure of the day. First of all, as I said, Siobhan is going to, to explain um, how we've arrived at today's event. And then, just to get us all stimulated and thinking, we're going to have Professor Richard Wilkinson, um, who's going to give an input uh, uh, um, about equality um, across, well, internationally, really, and I, hopefully that will re really get us thinking, and there'll be a short opportunity for questions and answers after his input. Um, then there'll be a short tea break, and after that, um, Mary Murphy is going to present the paper that you've received when you registered um, the On Shaping Our Future, the sort of vision that has been prepared by um, Isfeda Ling um, over the last um, few months. Um, then the aim after that is to really start a discussion, debate about that paper, and that's going to be led off with an input from a trade union perspective by Jack O'Connor, and after that, we're going to, to, to focus on um, you yourselves having a discussion into a round table discussion, and there'll be facilitators at each table. Uh, um, so there's quite a good opportunity for that. And then after the sort of discussion at the tables, we'll have a bit of an open discussion, an open mic discussion. And then at the, the, the very end, Neil Crowley has the unenviable task of pulling all that together and suggesting how we might go forward from here. So it's a lot to get through. We aim to finish at 2 o'clock. Um, various speakers have to leave at certain points, so we have to stick to time. So, so I guess, guess I'll ask everybody to try and be concise when you make inputs and things during the day, just to keep us to time. Personally, I'm not going to say a lot about the content, because that's really up to you. Um, and I'm not going to say a lot about the vision, because the other speakers are going to do that. But I was just struck, in fact, by two things just yesterday, by chance, that reminded me why this event is so important and so timely. I was woken up yesterday morning um, by the radio coming on and hearing somebody talking about Combat Poverty Agency's um, last annual report. And that just reminded me about the trend that we've seen in the last period of, in a sense, shutting down voices of dissent or alternative views in this society, whether it be about poverty or human rights or equality or issues of racism and discrimination. And shutting down voices both at national level, but I think also pressure on groups on the ground to be much more discreet and quiet. So that's one thing that needs to be challenged. The second thing that yesterday I was working on a research project on child poverty in Europe, doing an Irish case study, and I was looking at new figures about where Ireland stands in relation to other European countries. And I was reminded yet again how unequal our society is um, compared to many other European societies. We're well above the European average for people below the 60% medium poverty line. When you look at the rich countries in Europe, and we are still one of the rich countries in Europe, we're a long, long way behind the best performing countries. And all of that reminded me why the model that we have had has failed, and why we need a new vision to go forward. And this discussion that we're having today is really about creating that new vision. So I hope you have a stimulating and interesting session, um, and that you really get a chance to have your own input and feedback on what we've been thinking about these issues. So to explain what we have been thinking and how we've arrived here, I'm going to ask 
um, Siobhan, I don't know who you, I'm sure you all know, to, to, to introduce that and explain how we got here, which is not a very straight line, so it's a challenge for us to do it.